Rejoice, Christ the Savior is born. Merry Christmas to you. All right, there's like 120 of you and one of me, and I do have an amplifier, but that was weak. Let's try it again. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's let our version of the angels lead us into worship with our first choral anthem. be with you. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. We are gathered by God to share the love of Jesus. And what a wonderful thing it is to welcome you on Christmas Eve to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Whether you're with us here at 149 Lake Avenue or joining us out on our Facebook, it is great that you have taken time on this evening to do what the shepherds did, to go and see what has happened in Bethlehem. It's been a long time since Jesus was born there in Bethlehem, but still that event rings true. It rings live in our ears and hearts, and that's what has drawn us together is the news that a Savior is born for you. It's good to be here and worship together. Normally, on a Christmas Eve, prior to the pandemic, you would have been rustling all kinds of paper, worship folders and bulletins and things along those lines. We have dispensed with all of that now, so all that you need in order to present your worship is a heart oriented towards God and eyes that are fixed up on the screens that are in the corner of the church or down here in the corner of the screen if you're out there on live stream. So the words will come along, the prayers will come along, and we'll give you direction as time goes on as well. The other thing that you will not see during this worship service is the ushers coming forward to gather an offering. And you might be thinking, yay, no offering. And I would like to tell you, yes, there is an offering. It is a wonderful thing. And what you can do is if you've already stopped at the offering plate that's by the door of the church, thank you for doing that. And if you haven't, we encourage you to do so afterwards. And you'll also know that St. Paul's has the opportunity and the, and the ability for you to give electronically if you'd like. You can 
take down that information. You can visit that during worship. If you'd like, spalutherorg slash give will help you out in that. And that's enough said about that. The reason that we have come is to worship our Christ child, who is also the Christ King, here on this evening. And so I want to invite you to stand and pray with me together the gathering prayer. Let us pray together. O oh, Word of God, made flesh of the Virgin, on this day we behold your glory. You are full of grace and truth. Enlighten the hearts and minds of your people, that we may feast upon your word by faith and be reborn by your power as the children of God. For with the Father and the Spirit you live and reign as one God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening carol is one that the choir gave us a little preview into, O Come All Ye Faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. When all was still, and it was midnight, your almighty word, O Lord, descended from the royal throne. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, although it's true that as we have heard that God abides in us and his love is perfected in us, still we sin every day. And we need the assurance of his forgiveness. So, let us go to God, seeking his power to amend our sinful lives. Lord Jesus, the love of God made manifest among us. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. Without your help, we cannot change. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Steadfast love surrounds those, the one who trusts in the Lord. O oh, you righteous, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. The peace of the Lord is with you all. And also with you. In that peace, let us greet one another, wishing a blessed Christmas and sharing the peace of the Lord. Merry Christmas to you. Is that good? That's Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's wonderful to meet you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Peace to you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Peace. God's peace. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas and God's peace to you. Merry Christmas and God's peace to you and to you too. Merry Christmas and God's peace to you and to you too. Merry Christmas and God's peace to you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Let us pray together. Almighty God, as this night shines with the brightness of the true light, bless us to know his infinite love 
wrapped in flesh in Bethlehem, and at length come to the fullness of his joys in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear O Holy Night. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The, pro the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian, for every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name, sorry, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice. And with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, you are always with us, even to the end of the age. Since we have seen your great light, increase our joy so that neither we nor others will dwell in darkness any longer. In your holy name we pray. The second lesson is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to Nazareth, a city of Galilee, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the household of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born 
will be called holy, the Son of God. Sorry. <laughs> and behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. O Lord, as you ask Joseph and Mary to trust in you, may we come to have that same trust and always rely on your strength. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The third lesson is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, though there was no room for you in the inn, bless us with open hearts that we may always welcome you there. In your holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. 
The fourth lesson continues the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. And in that same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, may the good news of great joy, once proclaimed by angels, also take root in our hearts, that our great fears may give way to greater praise. In your holy name we pray. Amen. angels we have heard on high.
grace and mercy and peace to you from God, who is our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. If you were paying attention to where the verses and what the verses were in our readings that Brenda brought to us and I continued, you'll see that the beginning and the middle and also the end of this story is just littered with angels. They're all over the place. Angels are indeed all over the place. I'd like to teach you a great Greek word. You've heard it in English before, so it's not going to be hard for you to pronounce but it's this one, myriad. Say that, myriad, myriad. It's not Muriel, it's myriad. Myriad is a lot. <laughs> myriad is 10,000, 10,000. And the book of Revelation tells us that around the throne of heaven, there are myriads of myriads. So this is 10,000s of ten thousands. So we're already up to a hundred million. This is a big number. And it's multiples of that because it's myriads of myriads. So we're talking a full plate of angels there around the throne in heaven. But I bet my bottom dollar that there wasn't a single one of those angels that surround the throne of heaven that on this night didn't leave their post for a little bit and come and peer into the skies over Bethlehem and to shine like the brightness of the sky above singing and not a single one would have skipped out on the birth of Jesus the Savior, the thing that has been entirely prophesied, the center of all time and experience in the world, the most important event in all of history ever, they definitely wouldn't have missed that. And I'm so glad that neither of you, you've taken some time away from your posts. You've set aside the evening, and you've said, this is for the Lord, the newborn king. This is for the Lord, the babe born helplessly in Bethlehem. This is for the Lord, the one who came to live and die and rise. This is for the Lord, who is alive now and is even among us right here in this humble place in Saratoga Springs, New York, this evening. Because wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he's right there, right in the midst. He's inhabiting your songs. He's inhabiting your thoughts. He's inhabiting your words. He's inhabiting your life. And that's what he came to do, to inhabit the world, to fill it with his love, his grace, his peace, his joy. But we're not always full of that. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact that many of us are full of something else. We're full of ourselves, as well as what you're thinking right now. I'd like to take a look at one of those angels that's littered in the beginning of Luke, a fellow by the name of Gabriel. If you take his name down in Hebrew, it means mighty man of God. It's not one of these cherubs like you see around the room. This is a warrior at which people would be terrified, except that when he comes and he talks to Mary, you can imagine him bowing acknowledging her for the special role that she plays in creation. The only one ever to carry God in her womb. He says, greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. And he goes on to tell her about how she has found favor with the Lord and that she would bear a son whom she would call Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. He goes on to say, he'll be great. He'll be the son of the most high God. And thanks be to God that she said yes. Because where would we be without the angel 
coming and telling her, and her saying, let it be to me as you have said, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. It was a miraculous moment that the angels brought along. Mary became, instead of full of herself, she became full of the Holy Spirit by whom Jesus was incarnate in Mary. She became full of the body of Jesus Christ. And on this night, we recall that there she was in the most awkward maternity ward that ever has been, right there in a house where they would keep the animals because there wasn't any room for them in the guest room. Mary and Joseph, and finally a little clot of flesh that was named exactly like the angel said, Jesus. And just at that moment, as soon as that baby was delivered, another angel, an angel of the Lord, appeared in the sky to some shepherds who were out camping and taking care of their flocks at nighttime. He comes along and he says, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And what did they do? Ah! They were terrified, as one would be when encountering an angel of the Lord. Have you ever heard the phrase, the devil is in the details? That's contract law. But God is in the details too. I'm going to teach you a little bit more Hebrew this evening. Say this, Malak Yahweh, Malak Yahweh. That's, if you were to translate the phrase that you see on the screen in front of you, that's what that is, Malak Yahweh, an angel of the Lord. Now I'm going to teach you one other thing, similar. Say, Ha Malak Yahweh. Ha Malak Yahweh. Both of those phrases you will find in the Bible. Ha Malak Yahweh is the angel of the Lord, and plain old Malak Yahweh is an angel of the Lord. Throughout the First Testament, all of those books that were leading up to the birth of Jesus, any time that you came across the phrase, Ha, Malak Yahweh, the angel of the Lord. You know who you're talking about? The one who is in the manger. The one who is born. The angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord came to sing about the angel of the Lord. And he says, good news for you. Glad tidings for you. Tonight. Right over there in that city, Bethlehem, is born to you a Savior. This is the Messiah, Yahweh. And this is going to be a sign for you. You're going to go, and you're going to find a baby. He'll be wrapped in swaddling cloths, and he'll be lying in a manger. Now, that was just one Malak, Yahweh, that showed up. But as soon as he was done delivering the message, all of the Greek word, myriads of myriads, showed up. And they sang what you just sang. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Oh, come on, do it with me. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Except that they had been preparing for millennia for this, and you were just put on the spot. You did a very good job. It must have been the most beautiful thing that has ever been heard, because it is the most beautiful thing that has ever been sung. The birth of Jesus, I would say, might be the greatest miracle. We look at Scripture and think about Jesus, you know, healing people who can't hear, restoring sight to the blind. We think about Jesus walking on water and turning 
water into wine and feeding 5,000 men and more women and children with five loaves of bread and two fish. These are incredible miracles. We even think about him raising the dead. Lazarus, his friend, and Jairus, his daughter. And you could even say that the miracle of miracles is that Jesus himself took up his own life and he lived again. But really, is that so surprising when you think about what happened in Bethlehem? Has it ever been that God would inhabit human flesh? Has it ever been that the one whom the heavens can't contain would be found in the womb of Mary? How astounding is this? But here's the even greater miracle. That it's for you. That it's for me. I mean, think of this. Shepherds? Filthy, dirty, stinky shepherds, these were the first to hear? And then foreigners, these were the ones who came to visit? That's kind of who we are, though. Our sins make us stink. and We're outsiders to the kingdom of God until Jesus comes in the flesh for us. Until he takes his eternal love and focuses it down into a tiny human body. I love tiny humans. Their hands. I love to look at their feet. I love to get up close to their head and smell baby. Oh. That type of child that we know, that's who Jesus was. And then you start to think about the miracle of miracles, that those beautiful tiny hands and those feet that couldn't hold up his body on this night, that tender flesh that he had, he took all of it on so that it could be pierced on the cross for us. So that our flesh would not go through that kind of suffering. That he would then live and we would also live. What a miracle this night is. And my friends, I want to tell you that it is for you. That might be the biggest miracle of all. That Christ did all of this, not for his own sake, not for the angels, not just to please his Father, but for you. So for we who are jealous of one another, we who are bitterly divided for one another, it's for you. For someone who is very far away from the Lord and very close to the Lord, it's for you. For someone who is single and someone who is married, for you. For the very young and for the very old, for you. Christ came into the world for you. For those who are straight and for those who are gay, God came into the world for you. God came into the world for those who are in any way turned away from him and all of those who are turned towards him, he came for you because we all, all all need him. The angel of the Lord told us of these glad tidings of great joy, which shall be for some of the people? No. For a few of the people? No. The good tidings of great joy are for who? They are for all the people. Let's say that again. They are for all the people. Now I want to ask you, who is a Malach Yahweh today. I've told this story many times in sermons, but it's a good one, and so I don't see all of you all the time. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing it. There was a statue of Jesus in Europe during World War II that was broken by an Allied bomb that was dropped. And it was damaged in such a way that the hands of Jesus were blown off. And after the war, a sculptor was hired to repair the statue. Came and trundled the big marble statue off to his workshop. And it came back just a few months later 
but not with hands. He came with a sign. The sign says, I have no hands but yours. Yahweh has no voice but yours. He has recorded in his word that we take to heart this evening. And he says, you go say. You go tell. You make it known. The shepherds are our example. Because what did they do? When they heard this news, after shrieking in fright, they said, no. Maybe we should go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has transpired, this thing that the Lord has made known to us. And so it says, they went with haste. Translation, they sprinted. They sprinted from their sheep down into Bethlehem, and they went door to door, knocking, looking for Jesus. A babe, any baby here? Knock, knock. Any baby in this house? No? Okay. Knock, knock. Any baby in this house? No? Knock, knock. Any baby in this house? Why, yes. Yes, there is. And they come in and they see Mary and Joseph and the child just as the angels had told them. You are here and you are hearing what the angel has told you. And you are here seeing and acknowledging that what is these stories are are more than fables. These are truths. These are historical moments that have eternal significance. And what did the shepherds do then? They glorified God and they told everybody else. You're doing part one when you raise your voices here. When you sing carols, when you pray, you are raising your voice and glorifying God. Good for you. That's only half the job. Telling others what you have seen and heard. The truth about Jesus who is for you and for all is how God reaches out to the world today. There is no plan B. Christ came as plan A, and we have been joined to him, and the miracle is that God is still joining himself to us, even today. So now, all of you myriad, malak, Yahweh's, let's get to the work of making sure that everybody knows about ha Mal the angel of the Lord who came for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God that passes all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds rejoicing in Christ the newborn King. Amen. We continue our lessons and carols. The fifth lesson continues the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, you came to us as an infant, humble and vulnerable as you love and make your home with those who are humble and vulnerable, bless us to welcome them so that in loving them, we may also welcome you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our carol.
us pray. As the flames of these candles light our faces, may they also remind us of the true light who came into the world, the child in the manger at Bethlehem, the Savior suffering our death on the cross, and the King soon to come from the throne on high. May he remain our light here on earth until we reach his eternal kingdom where we need no light, nor lamp, nor sun, where Christ shall be our all. In his name we pray. lesson continues the second chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. And when the shepherds saw the child, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning him. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Lord, you call us to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth. But before we look so far away, bless us simply to look across the street, to share your love with those you have placed right nearby. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please blow out those candles and rise to sing that hymn of mission, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Since Christ came for all, let the just rejoice, for their justifier is born. Let the sick and infirm rejoice, for their Savior is born. Let the captives rejoice, for their Redeemer is born. Let slaves rejoice, for their liberator is born. Let free men rejoice, for their true master is born. Let all Christians rejoice, for Jesus Christ is born. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing carol, Joy to the World.
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.